Venerable religious and dear parishioners, we have quite the exhortation to charity in today's epistle, and I would like to speak about this. St. Paul's writing to the Colossians, which was a community in Asia Minor at his time, and it's one of the short epistles in the in the Bible, as I take a look at it very quickly here. It's only four chapters long. And one thing I like to do is in commenting on a scriptural text in a sermon, I'd like to look at the rest of the chapter and try to get the context in which it was given so we understand the bigger picture. And when we look at the earlier part of this chapter 5, we can see St. Paul denouncing various kinds of sin. You might call it the negative aspect of Christianity or, or, or following the gospel. Don't do this and don't do that. So just listen, let's listen to his words. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mortify, put to death, not in a literal way, you kill, killing oneself. No, just putting to death sinful behaviors. <clears throat> Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, lust. She names it right away, three different kinds of sins against holy purity. Evil, concupi evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is the service of idols, for which things the wrath of God comes upon the children of unbelief. It's very strong language, wouldn't you say? St. Paul is trying to get across to them the evil of sin. These are the things we must conquer, we must overcome in which you also walked some time when you lived in them, but put you also away anger, indignation, malice, blasphemy, filthy speech out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, stripping yourselves of the old man with his deeds. So St. Paul is there covering especially sins of the tongue, and they're manifested through sinful anger, indignation, malice, blasphemy, filthy speech, bad language, bad words. It's very strongly condemned by St. Paul. Don't tell lies. Strip the old man with his deeds. St. Paul uses this phrase more than once. Putting, to, putting away the old man and putting on the new. What's the old man? It's, it's our sinful inclinations. It's our Adam self, as scripture often, or as the spiritual writers often tell us. But this, St. Paul doesn't just stop with the negative of the don't do this, don't do that. And I think sometimes in our spiritual life, we just kind of focus on that. Well, as long as I didn't do these bad things, I'm doing all right. No. St. Paul goes on to talk about the positive. And today's epistle is definitely the positive aspect. What to do? Putting on the new Make him who is renewed unto knowledge. And this is where I'm skipping ahead a couple of verses. And uh, in actually in verse 11, which is just before this epistle begins, he says, where there is neither Gentile nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian or nor Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So remember, the Jewish people were very strong, and, and of course they were taught to be this way. You had to be a Jew in order to, a good Jew, a practicing Jew, in order to save your soul. But now 
the gospel is for everyone. The bloodlines don't matter now as they did before. It's not necessary. Indeed, one should not follow the Jewish old law. This is now the new covenant the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament, and everyone is now called to be a part of it. And now we have these beautiful, positive explanations. You know, in one translation, which I just read to you, it's St. Paul says, put on a heart of mercy. In the Douay Reims, it's uh, put on the bowels of mercy older expression, but the same thing. St. Paul is saying, even try to have that heart of compassion for one another. This is how we should try to see one another. See all of our fellow men with this, with this kind of spirit. Put on this, this heart of mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. We have to practice forgiveness. No wonder our Lord puts it in the Our Father, which we should, of course, be praying every day. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So if we want forgiveness from God, we have to give it to one another. Sometimes these are only unintentional hurts that we receive from others. But whether they're unintentional or intentional, we have to practice the gospel. And forgiveness, as difficult as it may be, and of course we need the grace of our Lord to do it, but it always gives us a peace of soul that we didn't quite have before that when we forgive. But above all these things have charity, which is the bond of perfection. And I was also inspired to get to comment on St. Paul's Epistle of Charity because of the saint for today, St. Martin of Tours. And just to quickly refresh the story of him, he was a bishop in the early church. Obviously, the bishop of Tours, which is in western, southwestern France. And before that, uh, before becoming a member of the clergy, he had a military career. And you probably read this story, but again, it's good to review it. He was, you know, riding along on his horse one day. It's bitterly cold. And he sees a beggar along the side of the road, shivering for lack of sufficient clothing. And he has around him his heavy military cloak, voluminous. You know, it's a standard issue to help keep soldiers warm and, you know, in, in their, uh, in their whatever duties they have to do. And he can see this poor man shivering on the side of the road. He takes out his sword and he immediately cuts it in half. He had to keep from freezing himself. So he kept, you know, it's more difficult now for him to stay warm. But he saw the need, and he acted upon it. And that night, in his dream, our Lord appeared to him. And our Lord was wearing that half of the cloak that he had given to that man who was freezing along the side of the road. And our Lord gave him to understand that when he did that act of charity to that beggar along the side of the road, he was really doing it for our Lord. And this is something our Lord taught. He says, whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Now, we don't make the false equation that each one of us equals Christ. Of course not, not in that sense. But our Lord teaches us to see him in one another. 
if I'm not mistaken, Martin at this time may have even just been a catechumen, not even a baptized Catholic yet, but one thing understood is the need to practice charity. And remember, and St. Paul goes on to say, May the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Unto that peace, indeed, you were called in one body. So you see, all baptized Catholics are members of the mystical body of Christ. So if you do a good deed to a fellow member, you're doing it to Christ because we're part of his mystical body. If you do an, a harmful deed, an evil deed, do something hurtful to another member of the mystical body of Christ, you're doing it to Christ in that sense. So it's something we need to be conscious of. We are called to be members of the same body. We are united in by faith. Uh, remember, this is the first mark of the church, the mark of unity. Mark, we believe the same way, we worship the same way, we're governed by the same laws of the church. It's a remarkable unity. And yes, it exists among traditional Catholics, but sometimes we lack the unity of charity, which should be there. And St. Paul goes on, of course, besides mentioning gratitude, be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly. So in other words, be, you know, often read the Holy Scriptures, meditate on them, of course, with the guidance of the church. In all wisdom, teach and admonish one another by psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the early Christians at his time were given to a lot of singing. And I'm sure it wasn't just in the liturgy. It was when they got together. Now, you may think, well, I'm not much of a singer. But still, singing is good. You pray twice when you sing a hymn. But he's talking about even admonishing one another. There's a time and a place to admonish. And this is not because you lack charity, but because in charity you want to help this other person. Maybe they need to have something called to their attention or some kind of a not good behavior they're doing. So in charity you would admonish this person. So it means standing on a soapbox and chastising everybody who comes along your way. No, in charity and in humility. So it's all part of this beautiful picture that St. Paul paints for us in today's epistle. Remember the holy souls in purgatory, especially in this in this month, but really throughout the year. St. Francis of Rome thinks that, you know, for forgiven mortal sins, one has to spend years in purgatory. Of course, her not official teaching of the church, but let's remember it's very strict and very just on the other side of the grave. And we can practice charity to the holy souls by offering up masses, sacrifices, especially the holy sacrifice of the mass, having a real devotion to the holy souls in purgatory, and the more charity we show them, and you can't help them in body anymore, of course, but you can help them in soul. Remember, and I'll close with this exhortation from St. Peter, one of St. Peter's epistles, Charity covereth a multitude of sins. The more you have sinned, do the more charity, the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, and it will cover your sins. It will help make up for your sins. Remember charity, too, when we give it, it always comes back. Not that we do it for that reason, but again, we do it for that true love of God and true love of neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.